I do want to say uh, before I lose the chat window um, that uh, we we are do have some of our animations are presently in review, and so I have a, a little um, Google Doc that I would like uh, anybody would like to help me as a reviewer on some of these animations, and just drop me a line at rife at rice edu and I put it in the chat because um, this is my rice hat <laughs> and, um, uh, and I'll send you the link to the to the animations. I'll show them to you here, uh, but be aware they're still in progress. And so um, uh, the things that I'm going to show in this presentation with only one exception are completely free uh, to uh, people of uh, all small domes there may be a small charge for 4K and higher. All right, so let me go ahead and uh, start. And I'm going to share the screen. So uh, when I do uh, our uh, planetarium presentations, I use a piece of software that we have created called Media Show. And Media Show is a really handy um, way to set up uh, a program uh, and the cool thing about it is you can include all sorts of different materials. Uh, you can have as many button sets as you want. So, um, for example, I gave this uh, in Santa Rosa and now I'm giving it new. So I just created a new button set and all my buttons are here and I can uh, edit a button and insert something or move something down. And it will uh, insert is one of the most important new features is that you will move all the rest of the buttons down so you can add a new picture. Um, so this is how what we use to to uh, to program it. Uh, we can have it go to other um, other uh, applications if we want, or we can uh, have it show videos or sequences. And I'll show you some of, of each of those. Anyway, so. Um, as I mentioned, the first thing it can do is to launch an external um, uh, program. So I'm going to now show you uh, space.rice.edu, uh, which is my outreach uh, website at Rice University. And uh, this has a lot of material in it and virtually everything that's on this website is completely free to use. Um, it, we just don't want you to sell it without talking to us. <laughs> so we've got, uh, we're presently funded by the Heliospheric Education Activation Team. I'm a heliospheric scientist. I've been studying the Earth's magnetosphere and, uh, uh, for now 50 years. I started in spring of 1971 analyzing electrons and protons from the lunar surface with Apollo, and I'm still counting electrons and protons, you'd think I'd be bored with it by now. <laughs> we, so we have some material on the uh, anniversary of Apollo. Uh, we have some of our uh, animations of, of the Apollo lifting up from the, uh, from the lunar surface. And so uh, all of these are available in low resolution if you want to uh, download them or use them. In our Eclipse page, uh, we have an Eclipse newsletter, um, so if you are interested in getting notices of any of our animations or, or, or presentations or, or, or things, uh, click here and sign up for our Eclipse newsletter. Um, we talk about what the up upcoming eclipses are. There's a partial lunar eclipse coming up in November. Uh, there is a, a total eclipse uh, visible from Antarctica. And I'll be heading down to Antarctica uh, in <laughs> the day after Thanksgiving uh, for my 18th time on the center line. And uh, it'll also be my only uh, midnight sun uh, solar eclipse. So uh, we will be observing the, the solar eclipse from a boat right about here at about uh, three o'clock in the morning local time. So, uh, and you know, I'm going, what, three o'clock in the morning? And then I realized it's, you know, midnight sun. It's, it's summer in Antarctica in December. So these, uh, there'll be more information uh, coming along on each of those. Um, this is where the sun uh, will be uh, during that eclipse. And I, I'm 
and you can always program Stellarium and 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 uh, uh, and and the Digitalis equivalent Nightshade uh, to to make a path of of what the eclipse looks like for you at your site, and I really recommend it uh, uh, that you can see what it's going. It's one another cool thing about the December eclipse. Uh, it will be in the 13th constellation of the zodiac. Uh, so it's always a surprise when I tell my students that if they were born in early December, you are no fucus. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the eclipse in December is going to be in Ophiuchus. Uh, but what I want to talk to you more about today is the upcoming two eclipses that are crossing the United States. There is an annular in October of 2023, and there will be a total in April uh, of 2024. And as you notice, uh, they both go through Texas. And for those of us who you know live in Texas, it makes it really cool. Everyone in the state of Texas will have at least 85% solar coverage on one or the other, and most of them 85% or more. So uh, we are really trying to mount an educational uh, uh, push to make sure that every student, school child knows what to do and how to observe safely. So uh, what I'm going to show you next is kind of a presentation that I gave in South Texas a couple months ago. We've got a lot of new material since then, but you'll see it's kind of keyed toward them. Uh, but you can always uh, 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 put um, uh, you know more regional specific depending on who your your uh, your audience is. There are some lunar eclipse frequently asked questions. Uh, and solar eclipse frequently asked questions, and my Umbra file journalist here. Uh, the other thing which is available to you are eclipse animations. And again, I'm going to show you some of these in just a minute. Uh, one of them is uh, basic eclipse geometry, both in fisheye and in flat screen, uh, a zoom in of the eclipse in fisheye and flat screen. Uh, solar eclipse from Earth, solar eclipse from orbit, solar eclipse from the moon, <laughs> lunar eclipse from Earth, and lunar eclipse from the moon. And then I'm going to show you two more that we just are working on now. So all of those can be downloaded in low resolution for free. Um, there's also some eclipse graphics, uh, the difference between a, you know, a total and an annular eclipse. Uh, and uh, uh, and, and a lunar eclipse. <laughs> I love the t-shirt that has, you know, the sun, moon, and, and the earth, and it goes lunar eclipse, solar eclipse, and, and the one with the sun in the middle is apocalypse. <laughs> 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 that's, that's always a fun one to, to wear when you're giving a talk. Uh, and then, of course, the last diagram I hear was the selenelian, which is which another really cool lunar eclipse phenomenon that if you just happen to be at the sunset line uh, during a total lunar eclipse, you can look uh, one way and see the red sun and look the other way and see the red moon. And it's exactly the same red light that's passing over your head. The reason that moon over there is red is because it's seeing the red sun <laughs> over here and that light is going over you right now and everybody else that's on the Terminator line. So that's that's kind of fun. We've had several sailing aliens lately. And uh, if you've never seen one, it's really quite cool. All right, so, um, so now let me uh, exit out of, uh, of uh, fish tank, uh, I mean, out of Firefox. And then you notice it drops me back uh, into media show. Okay, so uh, now I can uh, start up the, the, the presentation. Uh, I can either show it through this, which is the Media Show Pro, uh, uh, and I just hit the D key uh, to hide it <laughs> or, or display it, uh, or more likely what I do is I use the special mirror version of the software. So I'm gonna X out of the Pro and I'm gonna go into the mirror. So when you're working on a mirror, it's nice to have uh, the mirror uh, on your screen mirror what's what's uh, what the uh, what the people are seeing. Uh, so what we've done in the mirror version of the software is we we put the controls way up here. So 
they're out of the way. And so now I'll load up that same program. So I use the pro to edit it, and then I can use uh, the uh, mirror version to play it back. So there's that Firefox button that we just did. Uh, now, when we play, put things on a mirror, uh, everything is, is distorted so that when it bounces off the mirror, uh, then it looks good in the dome. And so here's kind of the distortion map so if, you, if I'm showing a, a, a mirror distorted image, this kind of gives you a clue as to what it looks like in real life. Uh, straight ahead is here, left and right is there, the zenith is here, and the back is, is all around you. So uh, most of the domes use uh, dome animations and movies are all unidirectional. So, uh, we find that that's very handy. The other thing that's handy about it is the this part of the image is almost flat because it's bouncing off the flat part of the image of the mirror. And so if we show a, a flat screen uh, image or video, I can just squeeze it down into this area and it makes a really nice uh, wide image on the dome, but it doesn't extend past the, um, the zenith and confuse people a lot. All right. So one of my favorite animations of a total eclipse actually was created for uh, the first version of Dark Side of the Moon by uh, Aaron McEwen at Starlight. Uh, and, um, uh, and in fact, uh, he said that uh, if anybody wanted to purchase just this animation, he'd make them a good deal. So uh, the idea is when you have uh, the moon uh, passing in front of the sun, uh, then uh, we are now looking here. Here's the earth is swinging past us. Here's the moon uh, getting ready to obscure the sun. And, uh, and so you can see this mirror distortion. This is all the way behind us and it turns into a, an eclipse. So uh, as I said, this is one of my favorite uh, animations of, of it. Um, so again, here is the um, uh, uh, the map and and one of the nice things with uh, with media with uh, media show is I can zoom into it uh, as I want to so I can show more detail. Uh, the dark area is the annularity of this one, and the dark area is the totality of that one. And this these lines are ninety percent coverage uh, for the total, and these lines are eighty five percent. Uh, coverage for the annular. Now, um, people will say, you know, hey, I'm going to see 90% isn't that good enough. And I think a lot of people after 2017 got their eyes opened and said, whoa, <laughs> there's a big difference between, <laughs> uh, between a 90% uh, eclipse and a, and a totality. And so we really, really want to encourage as many people as possible to go find yourself a place in totality. But that also means find yourself a place that's got good weather. And if you look uh, at the path of this totality, it's, it, it actually hits, let me zoom back down a little bit, it actually hits uh, the North American continent uh, at, at Mazatlan, uh, and the weather is actually used best through Mexico into South Texas. And then it's almost as good through East Texas, and then it gets a little dicier. So, um, you know, find your place, but uh, be aware that, you know, clouds are always uh, an issue when you go, <laughs> when you're going eclipse. Uh, hunting and I, I must have my 18 times on the center line I've only been rained out once and clattered out once so I'm I've been been really fortunate <laughs> so, uh, now uh, the annular eclipse of course uh, it's it's less critical to be in the path of annularity because even when the annulus is completely uh, uh, formed and the moon tries as hard as it can to cover the entire sun, uh, you still have to use your special eclipse glasses the whole time, beginning in middle and end. And so uh, that's one thing that we want to um, really push is that 
for the annular, it's not as critical to be in the path of annularity. It makes it prettier and symmetrical and certainly darker, but it, even, even so, it doesn't get dark, dark, dark during an, an annular uh, eclipse. So here's the first of our animations that we have uh, been creating. And so this is, this is what uh, the path, uh, what the annular eclipse would look like if you've got on you know, a full eclipse glasses, you can't see any, anything else in the sky except uh, the, the eclipse itself. Uh, you, uh, at the very peak in the very center line, you'll notice it leaves a ring uh, and then it, it moves on over. So these animations were done for us by uh, Don Davis. Um, but there are also uh, little viewers that you can put the little square up against the sky. And this is kind of what it would look like if you had one of those viewers uh, so the sun is behind the viewer, uh, but you can still see the clouds behind. And sure enough, there's always a pesky cloud that goes across your picture. <laughs> You're going, what, 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 what happened? And it turned out it was just a cloud. Uh, there's this wonderful uh, ring of, of, um, of uh, the coronal, it's actually called a coronal uh, halo. So here's the path of the annular coming across the United States in 2023. And it will go even all the way across South America as well, which is really cool. Yeah, you notice I've got, I haven't touched the, the software. It, in fact, I've got it set on uh, autoplay, which means once it does one video, it'll jump right next to the next button and you'll see the button that it's on right now. And if I want to pause it and, and stay later. So like here is a case where I, um, uh, I, I, I did a clip uh, from Stellarium showing what it would look like in San Antonio. Uh, and then I did a, a second one uh, in, uh, in Santa Rosa, which is where I was with the, uh, with the students that I was teaching. They were just outside the path of annularity. So um, this is you know, the, the capture uh, from uh, Stellarium of what they would see. So it's always a cool thing to be able to just, you know, so they, they saw, you know, over 90% coverage, but they didn't get that, that full ring, but that's not too critical. So I, I argue with the students that it's more important if you're going to go take a trip to go to see totality than it is to get into the path of annularity, okay? All right, so, um, So this is our eclipse diagram that I just showed you before. Again, I, with, a, a, with a media show in real time, I can zoom in or zoom out of it. The, the, uh, the umbra does not quite reach the earth. And so you got a, a ring of the, of the moon, which, uh, I mean, excuse me, a ring of the sun, which is still visible around the edge of the moon. So this is the umbra and this is the pen umbra. So if you're in the umbra, you see a total eclipse. If you're in the penumbra, you see a partial eclipse. And when you're in this antumbra, then you get the annular eclipse, okay? Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, so now here is the path of the coming total eclipse. And again, it crosses into Mexico about Mazatlan, through Texas and up through Maine and out through Canada. Again, uh, however, the uh, weather is likely to be not as good in Canada. Uh, here is what, uh, what the eclipse will look like in Dallas. And the uh, neat thing about uh, having a total eclipse uh, in Dallas is that uh, we uh, will, uh, there are a number of football, baseball uh, stadiums, and we're trying to work with the locals to have them open and be eclipse observation sites uh, so that you know, thousands can be in one place and, and safely. This worked really well in 2017. Um, although uh, in this, at the University of Illinois, there was a stadium that, that the, the people on one bank of the stadium could see the eclipse <laughs> and the other one couldn't because of a, a cloud that was just that small. Uh, but it did come out for the last few seconds, so they were excited about that. And again, here I was in, in Santa Rosa, so I showed them. Now, this is using Javier uh, Yobet's 
software. If you haven't seen his website, it is amazing. You can click anywhere in the world and it will tell you what, when the start, maximum and end of the partial eclipse will be, uh, what, the, what the duration is and what's the total at, at obscuration. So it's a really, really fantastic one. If you use it, be sure to do a contribution because he does pay, have to pay pretty substantial Google map fees. So um, uh, be nice to, to him, but he's, he really does a spectacularly good job of, of now he has all the upcoming eclipses plus quite a few of the previous eclipses. So a couple of times I was thinking, you know, how many minutes did I see it from Winnipeg? And I could go on his site and, and, and figure it out again. So again, here's, here's how I, I uh, showed the folks in Winnipeg, you know, what, what time and dates. And, and again, from, uh, from Stellarium or, or uh, uh, Nightshade, you can really get a good, accurate estimate of what the, the times of first contact and second contact are. Um, but the nice thing about clipping them ahead of time is that when I did this, then I could do this entire uh, presentation in just a few minutes and not have to, to wait. Okay, so here's the equivalent solar eclipse uh, 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 diagram and shows the umbra now reaching the ground, uh, but relatively narrow generally. And so you have uh, the, uh, um, uh, the, the totality. If you're close to the edge of the totality, you'll see Bailey's beads more on one side than the other, uh, but it will, um, the, to the range of totality will be shorter. So depending on what you want to see, uh, if you want to see Bailey's beads, you want to go up to the edge. If you want to have the longest possible totality, you go to the center. <clears throat> and then here's the, uh, again, one that's available now, uh, which is the overall eclipse geometry. Now this is done for full dome and you can uh, download uh, both the fisheye and the warped uh, version. It comes with sound, which I have turned off. Uh, because I don't want to listen to myself talk when I'm talking. But again, with, with our software, I can turn on and off the sound. The earth is four times the duck. And I can turn on and off the, uh, the uh, uh, captions. So if there are people that are hearing impaired, uh, we, we leave the captions on. Uh, if they're vision impaired, we can make the captions larger. Uh, so we try to deal with whatever whatever uh, people that are visiting to make sure we help the ones with with disabilities, uh, uh, so we can be as close as inclusive as possible. Um, so now this is one of our new ones, the annular uh, overview. I don't have the the uh, the captions ready for that yet, but again, a similar thing. Again, this is full dome. It's coming over your head. Uh, and we put some lighting behind it so you could see uh, the fact that the um, shadow didn't quite reach the earth. And then we swing around and we see uh, the moon coming across and uh, not quite covering the sun. So that's one of our newer ones. Uh, this is uh, Bailey's Beads. Uh, this is a, uh, a uh, excuse me, this, this is not the Bailey Beads. This is the Eclipse uh, um, uh, um, uh, uh, contact one, two, three, and four. Uh, and so this is done in a, uh, a real speeded up time uh, that just shows you how fast uh, totality is compared <laughs> to, the, uh, to the partial phases. It takes almost a full hour for the moon to cover the sun and then only a minute up to eight minutes of totality. Now, People say, well, why, why wouldn't you want to have uh, as long an eclipse as possible? Well, I was at the eclipse at, um, in Mazatlan where it was almost eight minutes long. And the problem was uh, the moon was so big, it was a super moon that you could only see the prominences on one side as you were coming in and then as the moon was fully covered, you couldn't see prominences on either side and then as it started to come off, then you could start seeing the prominences on the other side. Uh, so there's, a, 
you get what you know it's always something new that you have to do okay so this is uh, one we did for the last time that's what it, what it would look like from orbit and again you have a uh, the moon uh covering the earth and uh, seeing the shadow uh crossing the earth this is uh this is an animation don don davis did it's not it, but it's based on some photog actual uh space photography and again we have voice for all of this but you if and you can either use the subtitles, you can also edit your own subtitles. This is a really cool uh, set of images that were done by uh, Rick Feinberg from the 2017 eclipse. And uh, uh, again, it came off of his uh, website and is, is, a, is a nice one to use, uh, showing the uh, prominences at low exposure. And then as you expose more and more, <clears throat> you get, uh, the um, um, uh, the outer parts of the corona, but the inner parts are overexposed, and so in order to really make a good photograph of a of a total eclipse, you need to make multiple exposures. One at really short uh, periods uh, to to capture the inner um, inner part and the and the prominences, and uh, longer to get the outer ones. Now this is a series of fisheye. Uh, images uh, that I have done on, on some of my various uh, eclipse travels. Uh, this one was from uh, 2006 in, um, in uh, uh, Libya, and it was, it was near noon, so it's, this is close to the, to the zenith, and you can really see the, the sunset all the way around. We had a solar telescope here, and, and of course we were all uh, had our, <clears throat> our cameras and whatnot, but the, the cool thing about this one, because it was almost straight overhead, um, it, you could, and, and there was nothing there. I mean, we were in a camp on the desert in Libya, and there was nothing to the west of us. And so, and the moon, and the uh, sun and moon were almost straight overhead. So this cloud of the eclipse looked like a tornado. Uh, and you could see the column of dark coming at you and it just kind of washed over you and when it washed over you you kind of looked up and you were in the shadow and it was total and uh, i had told some of my eclipse virgins i said you know if this is your first time don't try to take photographs until after the totality starts because this is one of the coolest experiences that you can have is feeling that dark wash over you and seeing that come at you is is why people go to eclipses and why they go again and again and again just because it is so crazy so <clears throat> there are um um I, yeah, as i said i've been to, to lots of them here's one in china we i call that dragon eats sun because the, the the there was a cloud that was just about to cover the eclipse and uh, fortunately we were able to uh, to move and uh, and get out of that shadow, uh, but I've, I've this was one in uh, Tahiti in uh, 2010 off a ship. Uh, this is uh, one in uh, 2012 in Australia across a ship. That was an interesting one because it was at sunrise, so you had sunrise and then you had an eclipse and you had a second sunrise, which was kind of fun. Also, everybody that was on the port side of the boat could have watched it in their jammies. They could have gone out on their on their little decks and seen it in their jammies. <laughs> um, so um, I, this was one that was really, uh, really dicey uh, in, in Indonesia in 2016. Again, you can see we, we actually did see it. Now, anytime you do a full fisheye uh, uh, photograph and then try to map it down to 1920 you don't get as much detail but if you look really closely you can also see venus peeking through one of these clouds and uh it was really great to hear the the locals uh pounding uh uh pounding their 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 uh maracas to get the sun back <laughs> that was fascinating um the um <laughs> It was a, actually a nicely phallic, yeah, thing there. Okay, anyway, uh, so the uh, um, the ones we, we've been to have all been different. And when they're at sunrise, 
they have one cool thing when they're at sunrise, sunset, they have another cool thing. Uh, one of the ones I went to in, uh, in, uh, in uh, um, uh, Madagascar occurred right at sunset. And you, you saw the, 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 the sun was total. And then as it started to set, the 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 it's it started to come back until when it was just about to the waterline it was just about back restored again uh, and I had placed myself so that it was setting over a little island and what was really cool and I wasn't expecting it and of course I didn't have the right camera for it is as that sun set over this island this little island had little valleys in it and every single one as that last bit of the sun disappeared over that valley, I got a green flash. So I got three green flashes at the end of that. Wow. It was just amazing. They, they put us up in little uh, uh, huts on the beach made of woven straw. And uh, it was really chilly on that ship, but it was great fun. Uh, now here is a, a here, again a fisheye video that that uh, that I did uh, from the top of Du Bois uh, in 2017, and again you can now see the red sunset all the way around you, and and again in a in a uh, in a uh, in a dome. This is really quite dramatic. The other thing that you can see with this video in a dome is that shadow crossing you, which is kind of fun. Uh, this is another one that was just a series of sequences also in Du Bois, but uh, this is one that I had my nephew take. And <laughs> unfortunately, I forgot to give him a cable release for the camera. So every time he punched the button, the camera jumped a little bit. <laughs> oh, man, yeah, that sucks. Yeah. But, you know, that's the way it goes. Here's a, just a little video of, of one of the eclipses. Now you notice I, with a video camera, you can take off the filter ahead of time, which I did. And you can actually start to see the Corona even when there's still a diamond ring. But don't do that with a regular camera and don't do it with uh, your naked eyes. Wow. Um, well, I mean, I can go on and on. Here's a here's some uh, really nice stills from from eclipses that are are really terrific. <laughs> This was from the 2010. There's that, there's that uh, roar, that ring. Um, this is now an actual photograph as opposed to just an animation. Of it. One thing I've learned is to try to be quiet when I'm making a video because otherwise I only hear myself. <laughs> uh, this was one from 2060. Now this one I forgot and left my filter on too long. <laughs> so you can see the, the sun going away. Now you hear the bells. We had a lot of thin clouds, so you can see the clouds moving across the image. <laughs> now 
And this is just now the end as we go into the diamond oh, ring at the end. Amazing. So you can see that you have to uh, definitely need to turn off your, put back on your filter <laughs> when it goes on. So I, I have a, also a sequence of, of safe observing tips. Um, NASA will be doing a new one out. Here's the old 2017 eclipse safety flyer, um, but they will be coming up with a new one with, with new uh, ideas. Uh, here's a, one way you can observe it safely by punching a hole in the box and seeing the image. But you notice how tiny that image is? You can make it a little bit bigger by punching a little larger uh, hole in the box and using a pair of readers. That actually gives you a bigger image. Uh, one of the fun things to do is to punch holes in a piece of cardboard and then take a picture of its shadow. <laughs> and each one of those little holes turns out to be a little, uh, uh, a little uh, eclipse. A crescent. Uh, here are some uh, uh, solar filters on binoculars, which are my favorites. If you put that uh, uh, binocular on one of these tripod adapters that looks like this, then you can set it on a tripod and then you can set it up and people can come by and look. Uh, these filters are not too expensive. Now, to find the sun with solar filters on is not easy. So, what, because once you put the filters on, the only thing you can see is the sun. So, Close your eyes, face the sun, and then bring the binoculars up and then open your eyes. And then if you're in luck, you can see it. Another thing I do is to do a solar projection, same uh, device to hold the binoculars onto a tripod. And then I usually put a piece of cloth uh, so you get the solar image uh, and you can use the focusing ring of your binoculars uh, to do it. H alpha uh, telescopes are great because you can see the prominences ahead of time. Uh, and uh, the turbulence on the sun. Uh, a sun spotter makes an, another really nice, uh, safe image uh, that the kids can trace. Uh, so here I am at the Women in, in uh, Space Conference showing all, all the different ways <laughs> that you can safely and inexpensively uh, look at the sun uh, during an eclipse. And, and so whatever you do, please, uh, please be safe. Now there's some wonderful pictures that have been done uh, during eclipses. This is a fabulous one of a space station transit. Um, this is a cool one. My, some of my friends at uh, Predictive Science in California uh, use the magnetic field of the sun to predict how strong uh, the coronal will actually be. And uh, two weeks ahead of time, they give you a prediction. And so the blue is their prediction and the gray is the actual photograph. So, um, I'm pretty impressed. <laughs> I'm pretty impressed on, I mean, and, and as I said, this is the science that my colleagues and I do, uh, how, how well you, they can give you a, a feeling. But of course, the true eclipse has so much more detail uh, than what you can predict. Um, a couple more animations that we have available is the solar eclipse uh, as seen from the moon. Um, so if you're on the moon, uh, the uh, um, uh, the uh, lunar surface turns blue uh, because it's lit uh, by Earthshine. Okay, and you can see from the moon, you can see your shadow uh, crossing the Earth. Okay, so at night on the moon, the surface is basically blue from Earthshine. Uh, here's what uh, a lunar eclipse looks like uh, with has seen from the Earth. 
and you get the penumbra, uh, then the umbra, and then when it's fully eclipsed, you get it red uh, because you're seeing just that red light uh, that's scattered uh, through the Earth's atmosphere and refracted around uh, to cover the moon. And one side may be brighter than the other because it's closer to the edge of the umbra. <coughs> um, another fun one is uh, the lunar eclipse as seen uh, from uh, the moon. So now if you were uh, on the moon and it was a lunar eclipse as seen from Earth, for you, it would be a total solar eclipse. And so I can turn on that one. Um, but because the Earth is four times as large as the sun, you don't get the really pretty corona uh, because the Earth is just too, too big. <laughs> you can see part of the, uh, part of the, uh, uh, of the corona on one side at the beginning of the eclipse and part of it at the end of the eclipse. And um, so uh, the, uh, and the, the ring of the Earth's atmosphere would be red again because the sunlight that's getting through uh, the Earth's atmosphere uh, is red. So uh, when it's a total lunar eclipse and you're on the moon, then the ground around you is red. So moon's a cool place if you're there. <laughs> okay, last thing I want to do, oops, I'm almost out of time. Uh, I want to show you a couple ones that we're also working on. Uh, this is the Artemis path. Uh, this is going to be launched this fall, should be, at a flyby of the moon. And so here is the, the path as we understand it. Uh, it will flip by the moon a couple of times, I'll make uh, two close approaches uh, by the moon. And we're not sure whether it's going to do a full extra circuit or not. Uh, and then it will head back to Earth. So this is what the Artemis path is going to be. And the, uh, this next one is uh, a, a vision of what uh, the Artemis flyby itself uh, will look like. And again, Don Davis did these uh, based on uh, models and, and real uh, lunar uh, OE DEMs. Um, okay. Um, there's one other thing I want to show you before we go, and that is uh, from, from a, a program we call Fish Tank, uh, we can take any fisheye movie, any 360 VR movie, and, and put it on a mirror. Uh, and so uh, we've got a 360 VR from, um, from, uh, from Wyoming. And um, so the thing about a 360 VR in a dome, you're only seeing half of it. So we can use our arrow keys to slew uh, and I can slew left and right and up and down. Uh, so we can see what's going on uh, around as the eclipse is progressing and check out all the, all the people. <laughs> and, and the nice thing is once it goes total, uh, I can pause it and look all the way around and see the shadow all the way around. So you really take full, full, uh, full uh, use of the dome as an environment that you can see uh, a, a full 360, a full sphere movie, and not just a, not just a hemisphere. Okay, well, I'm going to quit, but I will um, answer any questions if anybody wants them, because I know I'm about done. So again, if you um, want to be on to uh, get any of these or want to be on my, uh, to, to review some the the two new Artemis and the three new uh, annular, uh, send me a, post me an email and I'll get you the links. Oh, that's a good question from Steve. Um, Actually, this this one coming up is uh, in 2024 is actually pretty as a pretty long one. Um, uh, there are a lot of great uh, websites you can go to to see you know what the links and uh, and locations of of them all. There's a one called Mister Eclipse uh, by Fred Espinac. <laughs> yep. uh, there's uh, there's the Great American Eclipse, uh, which of course focuses more on the ones that are coming through the United States. But uh, Fred's is, is worldwide, uh, and um, 
the ones uh, from Z uh, Javier Jobet, or, or, uh, and I'm sure I am mispronouncing that name. <laughs> do, you, um, do you know offhand how to spell his last name to put it in the chat? Because I am not familiar with his website. You're not familiar with his I website. am not. I live under a rock. Holy, well, let me, <laughs> let me find it, OK? Uh, it's great to have the link there. And uh, and so that's the one where you can um, you can look at all of his all of the uh, upcoming eclipses here and all the past eclipses and each each eclipse he's got information on and and the and the site to the Google Maps and uh, and as I said it is it is it is really really awesome. He's got now some lunar eclipses. He's got interactive Google Maps. So, for example, let's let let's look at the total eclipse in the United States. Uh, so he shows here's the weather map. And this is where I was telling you the weather is going to be better in, in Mexico and in Texas. Uh, and then you kind of scroll down. He kind of hides the Google Map just because he wants he has to pay for that. So. <laughs> See, there's the Google map link. <laughs> so now I can zoom in. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Okay, so, you know, if I'm in, in downtown Dallas, so it'll show you when, when, the, when the maximum eclipse is, what the maximum total time is, et cetera. That's really cool. So yeah, you can click anywhere on the map and and get the uh, and get the particulars, which is awesome. And it looks like we should all go. Bo had to leave, but it looks like we should all go to both planetarium in 2024 for the eclipse. This Tyler is right on the edge of totality there, just inside. <laughs> Waco, Waco's dead on. Yeah. San Antonio is you know the north and west sections of of San Antonio are dead on. Mm. It's uh it's gonna be a there's going to be millions of people within a two hour drive. Wow. All right. Well, I will stop sharing and um, I will pass it along to my colleague. So, so I, I, this is why it's like to be the best friend of a uh, Eclipse fanatic. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no matter how many I go to, I just I have to go see what Pat's done next. Yeah. But anyway, uh, she does travel in style. 